Welcome back, everybody. We are now here again at our KNX Vodcast, where we will discuss multiple topics from the world of KNX, from the community point of view, from the events point of view, and also about what is new in the world of KNX. Of course, here I am again with my uh, Vodcast partner here, with Nikita Thompson from the UK. Hi, Nikita. Let's get started. Hi. How do you do? How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm doing very well, very happy. Also, like, especially happy because like, we can talk about like those things that concern the world of KNX. Oh my God, I'm just going like too much into into this uh, professional showmaster thing. I think this is like wrong at this place. Anyway, we have got uh, several topics to talk about, especially like uh, new topics. We already talked about this the last time uh, about energy management, also going in line with some other events which are coming up. Speaking about the events, we have some events coming up. Have you ever heard about the KNX Smart Energy Summit that we recently actually organized? Yes, yeah? Yeah, I've heard a bit about it. Quite okay. excited. <laughs> Right, so it started actually as an event like that we had uh, online organized and uh, we try of course to bring it like sooner or later to the main platform, to the main stage. Nevertheless, we already had some uh, topics and presentations, articles about energy savings, energy management in general. Energy management actually being the successor of the KNX city, we could call it like that, because we are also looking at different aspects, not only the buildings, but also the uh, electrical vehicles, energy generation, energy distribution, storage, and whatever you need in this world. Question to you, you are or you have been involved in the world of buildings uh, of course uh, because we're talking about KNX any projects that you would like to highlight here um, to do with it's energy very... management or just yeah. general well let's start let's start in general uh, like because uh, of course we're talking about like a more prestige project than uh, only having let's say a light switch on and off uh, this is of course that contributes to energy savings but uh, when we're looking at some nicer projects actually where these features have been installed, do you, have you already installed like some kind of those features? Yeah, so um, we've done one quite interesting project, uh, especially for myself, was uh, quite a large commercial um, building. So it was shared offices, uh, so they rent out uh, different floor spaces to different companies. Uh, and then they've also got sort of general rooms where you can just go and pop in if you're in that area and rent a desk for the time. Uh, and energy usage was, was quite a main focus on them and obviously reducing the amount of wasted energy when the offices were empty, when the shared spaces were empty. So we spent quite a lot of time around PIRs being the, the obvious choice to reduce it um, if people weren't using the room, turn off the heating, turn off the cooling. Um, and the shared offices where we're connected into the TVs and the um, audio side, we'd turn off that as well. Uh, so that was that was quite an interesting one from that side, just reducing the whole building's energy use. I feel like that was a really bad example. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pretty much, no, no, no. Where, uh, where was the project? Just like to understand like, where we currently are setting foot in. What's that in the UK? Yep, so that was actually uh, in the central, in central London. Uh, so Liverpool Street. Oh, um, nice. Which I think people quite, quite well know about. Isn't that the Beatles cover? Mm, no, that's no. Um, Albert Penny Lane. Street. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're talking about houses, not about streets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we, we, we started out with that company doing the one of the office blocks, one of their new office blocks, uh, focusing on energy management um, around the heating, the hot water as well. They had communal showers for people that were cycling in or using more efficient ways to getting into work uh, and didn't want to go straight to the office uh, after a sweaty bike ride. So they had showers, changing rooms, etc. So we did a bit of energy saving and energy management around the hot water. Uh, and from that, the amount of savings they got, we ended up uh, in one of the offices, other offices, ripping out the existing control system and replacing it all with KNX uh, so they could see the benefits at that site as well. 
Have you also installed like batteries? Like for energy we storage? No, not yet. Uh, we've worked with a few generators, uh, generator backups, but not batteries at the moment. We've had a few projects where they're future-proofed uh, to allow for the batteries. But I think at the moment we're still quite early in, in battery development. I think some people are a little bit hesitant um, in adopting them too soon. And they're sort of trying to wait until they feel like they're developed a bit more. Um, right. Yeah. Did you know that we already have like a 35 battery, like KNX 35 battery storage available? I didn't realize that. Whereas we had a KNX certified battery storage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have like uh, interfaces as well as like uh, manufacturers being members of KNX Association, providing therefore according to the right solution. It's called Zonin. And uh, the Zonin battery is KNX certified. Yeah. So we definitely maybe recommend to have a look at that because like this is like one of the solutions which we try to promote to the market. Pretty much saying like, okay, there is actually a battery and there's no need to wait for that. However, of course, I do understand like what you are pretty much saying because like many people, I think, like do not really realize that uh, those solutions currently exist. So and therefore, it's like we often have this, uh, yeah, this attitude or this uh, result that people want to wait until something is actually released. So, but that is like why we they, organize they... like those kind of summits. Yeah? Yeah, they have a lot of people sort of has, have a hesitation about adopting uh, new things too early and then having to deal with any of the the upgrades. Mm. Um, whereas if they wait a little bit, uh, they can can be sure that they've had all the bugs removed. Did you also so, know that KNX like can also integrate electric vehicles? Yes, uh, I'm aware of the electric charging points. Um, but something that I think would be quite interesting is starting to use the electric charging, uh, the battery packs in cars to power the house as well. So a lot of people that do have electric cars, you know, charging them up while it's sunny, if you're not going anywhere for that week, using the power from the battery to power your house at night when you're not getting the benefit of likes of solar power. Um, so I think that will be quite an interesting area to watch develop um, using the car battery as not just the car battery but a, a storage point as well we presented that actually as part of the KNX city in 2010 what you said so like this was one of the at that point however it was still a concept and we were actually approaching uh, manufacturers uh, of electric uh, vehicles but like 2010 was a completely different landscape. Uh, so uh, people would just buy an electric vehicle just to say like, oh, look at me, I have an electric car, but not actually really like use it. Uh, uh, pff, that was 10 years ago. Now, well, that was 11 years ago. Now, like everybody wants to have an electric car. So actually we're also looking at that possibility. I, however, don't really know like how this will be accepted because like if I have a car and I want to charge my car and I need to drive somewhere else, then uh, I want to have like my car fully charged. Oh, so as such, um, but no, what you actually pointed out, you're actually absolutely right. I think, uh, but like yeah, for the same reasons why people might hesitate, uh, that is like why it never got really through. But also like ten years ago, like why would we not talk about the batteries? Because batteries also were regarded completely different. Oh back then yeah. but the technology has changed and now we also ac ac actively say like look at the possibility to have like a battery in your house and yeah, that I think, pretty much is like what you said yeah i think we've got we've got the intelligence especially in knx we've got all the the logic and the, and the functionality behind it to say you know i'm not using my car for the next 24 74 hours it can be a power source but never drain it below an emergency 20%. So if I do have to use my car just to go to the shops or something, an unexpected short trip, I'm not going to be caught short that it does have a minimum threshold that it never goes below. But the rest of it can be used when, instead of going straight to the grid, start using the power from the battery. And I think that's one of the good things with KNX is, is the manufacturers are open to these conversations. They're open to these ideas and and um, processes that mm. you can have these well, it, conversations with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So in 2010, I remember, like, so uh, we presented that idea, but we had a bit 
problems actually uh, showing like okay that, that's how uh, how it works in yeah in reality in real life uh, because like, it was only a concept however now actually and yeah pretty much for the reason that you just mentioned there are some solutions available that allow you to have like the wall box or like even the car integrated in your house so you can actually realize what you said and if everybody would think like we would do, uh, then at least less fossil fuels would be used. But like, yeah, I guess like that that knowledge or that this way of thinking is still not 100% there. I hope that I don't like really start to offend people actually that like watch us. <laughs> but uh, that pretty much still needs to come in the mind of people and also like some people that think like, all right, I want to buy now a car. Should I really go for an electric? Because uh what we've just said is just like so the car as such would not only be an instrument to bring you from a to b could also help you to save energy and also to do a contribution to the environment yeah i think i think we're definitely getting there i, I think we've progressed a lot um worldwide in, in energy using energy more effectively but it is it is going to take a while for people to adapt and get their heads around um i know using electric cars is still a bit iffy some people still have a lot of questions about it but we've got to start looking looking at things from a different viewpoint um more about what we can do to to make the most of the resources we've got um yeah i'm like for me it's just like so i am actually so like right now i don't own a car i never owned a car in my life actually so uh but like right now because like mini me is on its way and so I'm actually thinking about like, okay, like going to the school, going to there, going to that. Like, of course, uh, here in Brussels, at least, the public transportation is not too bad. But I think it's just out of the question that like once you have a car, you're of course a bit more flexible, not only for holidays, but like really if you have some kind of emergency to get from A to B. So I'm actually thinking about, well, just like right now, once I need a car, I will most definitely get me a car. But here in this regard, I'm actually thinking to make uh, the extra investment to get me an electric car. Also because uh, Brussels wants to be car free by 2035, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So we're actually looking with a combustion engine at not only a technology which is 100 years old and has, well, ever since a bit developed, but it's still, let's say, contributing to like making the air not really breathable. So like, whereas with electric cars, that might change. So I'm personally like really considering getting me an electric car. And you also see more and more electric cars on the street. Question to you, like how do you see that actually in the UK? Do you see more cars, electric cars? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely increasing. Um, I quite often use a hire car service. Um, just if I have a long trip and I public transport isn't going to get me where I want to go efficiently. Um, and I'm the last car that I rented was actually a hybrid, so it was battery and and fuel. So it people are changing their ways and seeing the the battery car more as an option. I think one of the bigger concerns and something that is being developed is just the distances that they can go. I mean, running around London, um, and that it's fine in an electric car, but if you're wanting to sort of head up north. Uh, up to Scotland or or somewhere a bit further, you start to get a bit limited on on mm. how far you can go. But I think as we see more and more charging points pop up That's around the, the country point. and batteries developing, um, yeah. it will make them more and more just yeah easier. No. Well, you can do already like uh, like go from A to B and like actually do like. A good distance in some cases like even more than you could do like with a normal combustion engine uh, and charging doesn't take too long yeah but uh, the thing is just like if your battery is flat and you don't have like a charging point around you this is currently something that yeah people need to work on but uh, I've seen from also some people that have electric cars in time they do find like a charging pot, uh, spot and many times uh, uh, like in many cases even for free to charge your car so Again, something, but yeah, I think like with every pro, there's a con and definitely what those combustion engines have in common with like electric cars, try to find a parking spot. Yeah. Especially if you go to England, try to park your car uh, and you will either have to pay a fortune or you will have to drive around or just park outside and take a train to town, uh, which takes you like another hour 
to get actually to London. But in any case, I think like we're drifting away a bit like from the building to the car. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, as such actually you I think like uh, this also shows like how like the car actually like really affects our lives and uh, that the car as such should not be regarded like uh, separately from the building or separately from the house, but actually like as something that you can use inside your house. You know? so I think it's like maybe like I don't know like uh, but like I'm just thinking out loud, but maybe it's like we have reached a step like which uh, is like the combination of the camera with the telephone uh, that we've seen in the 90s. Uh, back then, like what when you would say like in the 80s, uh, I've got a camera, I've got a phone and I put it together. It might be like the similar situation. Maybe we're even beyond that point, uh, but nevertheless, it's still like uh, similar to like combining those things. In this case, it would be a car with a house. Uh, so maybe we are I like also it, like again at that stage. I think it's something that KNX has always done very well is looking at it as as we as it's quite often the KNX city, and you look at energy usage and energy management on a much larger scale than what we do at the moment um, where we're looking individually at a property and individually at a car and we need to start looking at it more as okay so office buildings are being used during this time period and people's residential houses are being used more during this time period so how can we even out that energy distribution and how can we use it in an effective way um, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Studies have shown, studies have shown that we are already able to do that with renewable energies. So like the renewable energies that we currently have available, if they would be properly managed, we could like really fill, at least that's the case in Germany. I can't really like talk for like other cities or places or countries. Uh, so if like maybe somebody who watches this currently has like anything else, leave it in the comments. But uh, nevertheless, in case, uh, in, the German case, like there have been studies that have proven that it's already possible to like really uh, fill the whole country with renewable energies. So, so uh, what you just pretty much said is like when we have this kind of management that we try to implement here with KNX, then we could already like uh, achieve like our goals that we have like for the next 10, 20 years. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. It's a, that's where putting the greater good comes into place. But at the right. moment, we're still all very commercially based where, where everyone wants mm. to benefit from it instead of looking at it as, well, this is going to benefit the environment and, and the city as a whole. Whereas a lot of people are like, well, is it going to benefit me as an individual um, in my pockets? So can, <laughs> can I be can bothered? <laughs> That's yeah. most likely. Can I be bothered? Uh, but well, no. let's see how the future unfolds. Right, I think that was like a very interesting exchange that we currently had about like this topic energy management. It's funny like how I just like, or like yeah. how, not me only, but like how we just like <laughs> threw in that point and uh, just like came up. I think like we could have like really talked about this like for hours and hours, 